Right, welcome to the Research Guild D Work How To video. Um, gonna do a couple things. I'm uh, gonna do a, a, a series of videos over the gap week uh, for folks to help get used to coordinate or to get used to D Work, um, which will be integrated with Coordinate. Um, this video is going to show the D work um, for in the, the view that role holders would have. Um, and for members just coming into D work um, as you know, new guild members, uh, you know, regardless of when previously you've you know, come into the guild, uh, you will see a much more limited view of the spaces and I will show those um, in the second part to this video uh, but it will open up member activities um, so even though folks there are many folks have been in the guild for a while and um, you know have already been onboarded uh, this is just kind of a you know an experience that we all have to go through together um, and I myself am also going through the member activities. Um, so you may see, you know, Ernest of Gaia, and you may also see Ernest of Gaia.eth in the leaderboards. Um, I just want to make sure that I'm also going through all the, the, the new joiner and, you know, beginning levels of membership, you know, just like everybody else. Um, so to just give a, a simple breakdown of what our D work looks like. Um, there are spaces for each pod. Um, currently, these pods and activities are gated, uh, you know, based on whether or not you're a role holder. Uh, we don't want to, you know, show too many activities, you know, and these are mostly just the tasks that the actual pods have to do. Um, so we can see if we go into the Northwind pod, you know, the payouts that we do on a regular basis, the budgeting, the polls. Um, we have, you know, templates for the different types of uh, work that we do. Um, and these will increase. Um, but essentially, the pod spaces are so that role holders can keep track of their work and when we do work you know we can record it in dwork it will push to coordinate and so folks will see um, in coordinate you know the work that the role holders are doing and then this also you know lets us know um, you know just helps us keep track from season to season uh, the routine work that the pods do um, we will probably make the pods, um, you know, anybody that, that wants to participate in the pods will probably get access to the pods. You know, you don't have to be a, a role holder per se to contribute to any of the pods, um, especially if you're learning about how to be a role holder. So we will definitely open up the pod spaces to folks who are interested in contributing to those pods. But currently, for simplicity's sake, you know, only role holders get to see the Kanbans um, for the work that they do. However, when they do that work, it'll show up and coordinate for guild members to see. So we have pod administration in the D work. And then we have for, you know, role holder activities. Um, and then we have member activities which i'll go over here in a minute and then we have various research projects that you know we've identified throughout the dao and our hope is not that this becomes the d work for these research projects many of them already have their structure in discord they may have their own discord but we want to onboard people to these projects we want to make sure that the skills that these projects need, um, that members can have those skills or at least know what those skills are. Um, 
And of course, if any research project or research work stream would like to use this D workspace in Research Guild, you know, we will make that open to um, the projects and the project stewards. Um, some of the roles that we have that will eventually, you know, as we get integrated with Discord, um, the DAO Discord, uh, we will have more than just the uh, research guild tag and the, you know, active member tag beaker. Um, we have role holders. Um, we'll have guild plumats, which are people from other guilds bringing their skills to our guild. So they may not actually, you know, care about the governance of the guild or the daily operations but they want to be active enough to be able to provide their skills to our guild and research projects. So we want to recognize them as, you know, active members, um, but not active, you know, in the sense that they're contributing all the time, you know, to the actual organization and administration of the guild. Um, so we do have a role for um, those folks and to be able to create, you know, um, space for like logo competitions or design work or AB work that we might do. Um, we have the, the Beaker, you know, guest passer role, which is essentially somebody who is interested, hasn't been onboarded, may or may not have attended a meeting, you know, may or may not RSVP to an event. Um, and then we also have roles for the different research projects, projects with research in them. The beta testers role is test DAO. Um, of course, projects, uh, you know, again, may have roles already predefined in their organization. So when we integrate with Discord, uh, these roles will align with those Discord roles where appropriate. Currently, we just have the members of the projects, and then we've created one group role called Project Stewards. So if you are a key contributor to a research project, if you steward, administrate that project, you know, help build the notions, um, you know, any of the like main active work of pro a project, we give you the project stewards role. This gives you management per permissions within DWORK to be able to manage your projects. Um, we currently don't separate the stewards out by the research project. When we integrate with Discord, we may find that Crypto Sapiens already has a a manager kind of role and so we would just map to that role um, and make sure that they have the permissions so we don't want to create new roles for organizations that already exist we um, have to right now because dworks not integrated with the discord but once it is these will more align with those uh, structures already established we also have, you know, the core guild membership. So we have the beaker role for guest passer. When you're a guest passer and you start the onboarding process, you then become a new joiner. As you, once you complete onboarding, uh, you go from being a new joiner to a learner. And of course, as you work with uh, groups or participate in education programming, you become a practitioner and um, eventually a contributor. And these roles are how we group um, member activities. So again, if you're a, you know, if you're looking for activities as a member, you will have a particular role depending on you know the d work tasks that you've completed um everybody starts out as the beaker 
guest passer. And then once you finish these three tasks or activities, you apply for the new joiner role and get the next uh, membership level tag. You can see here in new joiners, um, you know, again, this is where you make your introduction in guild chat. We can see that we have a pending submission here by King IPK. If we check their Discord link. Again, you can, you know, uh, treat these activities as if you've done been are doing them for the first time, or you can just link back to a previous time, you know, when you were onboarded that you did this. So we can see right here, King IBK left, uh, you know, a new message, a welcome message. So we will approve their submission. see we've got some folks that have filled out the membership form again you don't have to fill out the membership form again um, you just have to link back to your profile in the member matrix and you get approved so we have you know create Sobel profile you know, again, this is all things that we've asked people to do and they've done, but we want to give credit to people when they do these things. So, you know, all these uh, approved tasks, you know, will show up on the next coordinate. Um, so we'll actually see in coordinate the activities, you know, that people do as they become onboarded. And we have somebody applying for the learner role. So let's see if they have done all the tasks. Say a vista. Boom. So we can see um ooh, yep so we'll send them a message so do 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 their um Do, do, do. Let's see. So they still need to make an introduction in the chat. Say you used the. We can see here that somebody is. Uh... <laughs> they drop this in the notes, um, and they need to actually submit it as work. So, still people learning how to do things. We got Seya Vista on the membership form. Sobo profile. Oh. So, let's see. So, that's essentially how this works and, you know, how we see submissions that people do. And we will actually move those over here. You will edit this. Um, Go 
but I'm bam. And if we go to new joiners, so that's the only one submission we're waiting on. And this is essentially how it works. And then as people um, start to do tasks in a specific section, um, we add your name, or I've been adding people's names to the talent pathway table, uh, depending on the tasks that they're doing. Um, bam. I gotta check myself. Uh, we can, you know, put in what stage they're at. Um, currently I'm also keeping track of, uh, people's, you know, once they get, so the first thing I do, <laughs> sorry for this little sidetrack here, but the first thing I need to do every day is I come in here to settings, I come in here to roles, and I check to see if there's anybody that is new that's not already a guest passer um, and add them if they're not. Usually I discover this in, you know, the general chatter when somebody leaves a, a hello message. So we have eTrinity here. Bam. Let's see. They left a message. We're going to go to the guest passers. They're making an introduction in the guild chat. Yeah. Bam. And then we're just going to let them know. All right. So <clears throat> quite often you just refresh the page and it will look the way you expect it to. Um, so we have moved the make introduction in the guild chat 